Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on how local governments improve operations with data integration workflows. I'm Tiana Warner. I'm a product marketing manager at Safe Software. And I'm Erin Lemke. I lead the product marketing team. So local governments have large mandates, improve the quality of life for citizens, support local businesses to flourish, mitigate risks and liabilities, and take advantage of federal funding opportunities. To accomplish the day-to-day -day work of running a municipality or city, staff are divided into specific departments and work with a variety of data and applications to get the job done. While each of these groups need to work with the best fit for purpose applications to do their jobs well, often data is stored in ways that makes this challenging. Data from one system isn't compatible with the application another department uses, so data is re-entered manually, requiring many hours a week performing mundane or even frustratingly repetitive tasks. Keeping databases up to date is often done with heavy coding effort by contractors, making future updates a large undertaking. Or worse, sometimes moving data between systems is so challenging, it just isn't done at all. This is why thousands of local governments are turning to a data integration platform. With a few automated workflows, Many of these data challenges can be tackled, freeing up all of this manual effort and saving money. In this webinar, we'll be showing ex inspiring examples of how local governments worldwide are operating more efficiently by building data integration workflows. We'll also show a few demos to demystify how this works and provide you with resources to get started. First, what do we mean by data integration? This is the process of bringing together data from disparate sources and turning it into something valuable and useful. With so many systems storing different types of data, we're trying to avoid data silos, where all of this data exists, but it's independent of each other. By harmonizing these sources and keeping them up to date, governments are able to extract real value from all of their information. Data integration involves converting your data between different formats, transforming it into useful schemas and data models, and performing validation or quality assurance. Then all of this gets automated to eliminate manual effort. At Safe Software, we're the makers of FME, which is the data integration platform with the best support for spatial data worldwide. Our brief demos later today will show it in action. FME's job is to connect, transform, and automate. You can see what the FME authoring environment looks like on the laptop here. You'll build your custom workflow that connects data between systems. Then you'll send it through a series of transformers, which are pre-built tools that process the data to make it ready for use. Things like changing the data model to re meet the requirements of the end user's application. And finally, you send your data to the destination. Automating the workflow means you set it to run without needing to launch it manually. For this, we have an automations environment where you can set up the workflow to run in response to an event, like when new data arrives or a file is modified, or on a schedule, or whatever other trigger you want to set up. Today, we'll go through the eight common data integration scenarios that we see governments using every day. Bringing data together to deliver one call or call before you dig requirements, smart cities workflows, bringing data together for business intelligence platforms, bringing data into your GIS, sharing data between jurisdictions, delivering open data portals, providing self-serve data upload and validation services to bring digital plans into a GIS, and the many uses for application integration. As we go, keep an eye on the GoToWebinar chat because our colleague Stephanie will be sending out any links and resources that we talk about. We'll also send out the webinar recording afterwards and we'll upload all the slides and demos for you to look back on. Okay, so first let's talk about one call, otherwise known as call before you dig services. So many governments are required to provide data to citizens in underground information packages for safety reasons and to prevent infrastructure damage. So creating a fully automated system for this can save a lot of time, as well as reduce the risk of manual errors that could lead to liability. In some jurisdictions, like in Europe, this requirement is placed on utilities companies, but even so, the work, this workflow still applies to many scenarios where the government has to deliver information to the public or local businesses. So the implementation involves integrating data between many disparate sources into one connected data set that will tell you everything you need to know about the land and infrastructure. So some organizations will even make an automated system that generates responses to people's inquiries, and this significantly reduces manual effort and it also improves the data's accuracy, um, as well as generating an auditing trail. 
So here's an example of a city that uses FME for their Dial Before You Dig program. This is from our customer gallery on safe.com slash customers. Um, you, so you can find all the stories that we'll talk about today on our website there. So Burnaby built an automated workflow to extract information from GIS and asset management systems, and then integrate it and produce underground information packages. So this used to take three days of manual effort, but with automated data integration, it takes three minutes. So now their staff can use this freeze up, freed up time to focus on other tasks, and the risk of manual errors has been reduced. Um, at the bottom of the slide, there's a link to this customer story, and we'll have a, we have a recent blog on this as well if you're interested in learning more. You can read it at safe.com slash blog or look in the GoToWebinar chat and we'll send out the link there. Okay, so in FME, integrating multiple layers of GIS, CAD, and other spatial data sets is straightforward. Um, so let's open FME and look at how this type of data integration works. Um, I have an example where we have multiple spatial data sets from GIS, CAD, and satellite imagery. And we want to combine all of these into a nice map of downtown Vancouver and all of its um, rapid transit lines. So let me just close this here. Um, okay, so here's FME Workbench. Um, I have on my desktop a few, let me just close this one and I'll minimize this. So I have a few data sets here. Um, I've got some shape files of park polygons. Uh, so basically just to get started with this data, I just drag it onto Workbench here and it'll start reading that in. So here's some park polygons. I'll just preview that to show you what it looks like. So at the bottom here, you can see all those parks. And I've also got an AutoCAD file. Uh, this is the shoreline in Vancouver. So I'm just pulling all of these layers in so that I can integrate them. And we'll add that shoreline layer from that DWG file. So here's what this looks like. Once that loads, it's just going to be a bunch of lines connected together. So that looks good. And then we're also going to pull in uh, this raster image, screen or uh, uh, satellite image of uh, downtown Vancouver. So uh, this is all I'm going to do for all these layers is just pull those into a workbench. Um, the next step then to integrate all of them is you want to add some transformers to manipulate the data and get it how you want it. So uh, for example, in this shoreline one, um, I can add a line joiner and so or line combiner and so uh, these transformers are just going to um, process the data so i'm going to add a few of them and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to flip over to this completed workspace just so you can see what the result looks like so i've got all of these layers pulled in i've also got uh, vancouver streets um, this is a mytab file and i've got this geo package here this is two layers in the same geo package that shows the vancouver sky trains so the rapid transit lines and then I'm sending them through a bunch of different transformers to manipulate the data. Uh, this Mapnik rasterizer is a cool one. Um, this connects to the Mapnik toolkit, and this will generate a really nice cartographic map that has all of these layers in it. Um, and we're gonna add some nice symbology. So the last step in the workflow then is this, this output data set here. Um, this is going to be our final PNG map of Vancouver. So I just click run to get that going and then we can see all of the numbers coming through here as the features go through the transformers and head into the output and we'll let Mapnik do its work there. So I'm sending the output to the desktop so we'll go check that out once it's finished. It's going to be Mapnik has to do a bit of work here with all those layers so there we go we can see the file coming in. We'll let that finish rendering. And it's gonna give us a nice map with all of these layers added. We're gonna see the SkyTrain uh, lines. We're gonna see the different stops in all the streets in Vancouver. Um, so it's actually writing out a pretty big image here. So we'll open that up now that the translation is complete. And we'll let this, it is a massive image, so it takes a second, there we go. Okay, so there's our nice map. We've added a whole bunch of layers to it. Um, so you can see how you could uh, really 
do a great job integrating a bunch of different data sources and sending it to whatever output you want. In this case, we just wanted a PNG showing everything. It's easy to share with people, but we could write out to any of um, hundreds of data sets. All right. So let me jump back into here and back over to Erin. Thanks, Tiana. Yeah, so another common scenario for local governments is smart city projects, which makes municipalities more productive and are currently providing opportunities for federal funding. Creating a smart city involves automating city life, using the Internet of Things and sensor data. This data is often geolocated and contains spatial information. For example, GPS and AVL solutions or automatic vehicle location for fleet vehicles optimize the operations of first responders and snow removal services. You can also pull data from XML feeds, cameras, APIs, and any number of other sources. Managing all of this data is a lot easier with data integration workflows and can be automated so data is processed in near real time. I'll give you a few examples. The Iowa DOT, or Department of Transportation, has come up with many innovative solutions using sensors and FME. We'll focus on one of them here today. The image you see on the screen is shown on local TV channels to provide near real-time road conditions and snowplow information to the public. They build an FME workflow that reads XML feeds, traffic cameras, ways cam uh, sorry, traffic data, and other live sources, and they integrated all of this into a publicly available data set that can be accessed online. Automation is used to keep the data up to date, pulling it every minute and updating the public-facing content. Grand Lyon is the second largest city in France. Sorry, Erin, I'm having trouble okay. with the slides. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, they also use FME to provide streaming data to the public as well as to local businesses. Using the city's data portal, businesses are able to, to build innovative new services to operate more smoothly and to benefit citizens. To create this publicly available data set, multiple sources are integrated, including sensors, reports, and web services, and the city automates the workflow to make sure the resulting data set reflects the most up-to-date information. Be sure to check out the link uh, to this customer gallery story after the webinar to see a variety of services that local businesses have created. This includes the Renault Trucks software that Gregory talks about in the quote on this slide, where the local business was able to increase profit and reduce fuel consumption, resulting in less traffic and pollution for citizens. And I agree with him, that definitely sounds like a win-win scenario. We also have a webinar about smart cities that's available on demand. So if you're interested in learning a lot more about this topic, you can watch the application integration for smart cities webinar. Okay, I'll move on to business intelligence, but first uh, we had a couple questions come in about the demo um, and the more technical questions we can uh, answer one on one after. Um, but someone asked how long it took uh, to develop that demo. Um, we were able to do it pretty quickly. One of our experts pulled it together um, in like a couple hours. Um, so depending on your level of FME knowledge, it can be pretty fast to just whip together a workspace like that. All right, so business intelligence, um, BI systems like Click, Power BI, and Tableau are useful for governments who want to generate insight from their data and create rich visualizations. Many organizations are using FME to integrate data from various sources and send it to BI software for further analysis. So for example, the city of Lear wanted to integrate lots of their data sets and send the results to Click for analysis and rich visualizations. So they built an FME workflow to do this and they used the FME automations interface to set it up to run on a schedule. So this means their Click vis visualizations are always up to date. We have a lot of business intelligence resources available if you wanna learn more about this. Um, again, you can find these on our website and by clicking the links in these slides um, when we send out the webinar. All right, so I mentioned FME automation, so let's look at how this works. Um, we're going to just set up an automation to watch for when new data arrives and launch a workspace to process the data when it does. So I have an FME workspace running in the cloud. Um, so let me just go over here. So this is uh, where I go to access my FME server instance. 
um, just go to that URL. So to publish a workspace to FME server, you can either do that right from FME desktop. You can click the publish button here, and then this is just my server instance. There's the URL. And then we would just go through and publish that right up to the cloud, uh, along with the data files if we want. Um, or we can do it right from the web interface. You can just go to your workspaces, manage those, and then add a new one in. So to make an automation, we'll just go build automation here, create a new one. So you're also gonna see a nice workflow environment um, and it just starts with a trigger. So we can uh, select a trigger event here. Um, in our case, we'll wanna look at when a directory gets modified, we're gonna launch this. You can also um, watch Dropbox to see if something changes there. You can uh, watch if an email is received, you could connect to cloud services. Um, anything you need, really. Uh, some people also use uh, scheduling, so you can run this nightly. So we'll just watch if a directory gets modified. Um, and then we will connect to this data repository. And we're going to say when a file is created or modified, we'll launch that. All right, so next action, we are going to run a workspace. And again, we can take any number of actions here, but we're gonna just run this workspace. So here's one I uploaded earlier that just integrates a bunch of data sets. Uh, so we'll click apply. Okay, so after the workspace runs, um, this is either success or fail. So if it succeeds, I can say, send me an email. Um, we can do any number of things again, but we're gonna say, send an email. And then I would just load in my template uh, for Gmail and enter my info. I won't do that right now. Um, just gonna, that's what this exclamation mark is here. It's just asking me to fill in my credentials, but I won't do that right now. Uh, and then if it fails again, we can also do something. So we can maybe send an email and attach a report, a validation report to tell us why it failed. So you can see how easy it is to create really powerful automations. Um, to start it, we would just click the start at the top right here. And then this runs in the background. It's gonna watch a directory. As soon as something changes or is added, it's gonna launch this workspace and all of our data will stay synchronized and up to date. Uh, in FME 2020, we're gonna be introducing new functionality to automations that allows for even more sophisticated triggers for your workflows. So uh, make sure that you tune into our sneak peek webinar on February 25th to see more of that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Tiana. That's a great demo of how simple it can be to set up automations. Yeah. So our next common scenario is integrating GIS data. Um, the GIS department likely has challenges around field data collection, integrating as-built CAD drawings into the GIS, performing spatial analysis, and converting or combining GIS with other data types like BIM, 3D models, raster imagery, and point clouds. When SAFE was founded in 1993, FME cre was created to facilitate exactly these kinds of spatial data translations and transformations. So in terms of the GIS department, FME can address all of these challenges and more. Still today, FME is the data integration tool that provides the best support for spatial data by far. So you can have confidence that you can tackle any of these challenges efficiently. In the FME Knowledge Center, we have loads of articles and tutorials about working with GIS data. So be sure to join the community when you get started. Here's a great example of GIS data integration supporting city services. The city of Oshkosh wanted to improve first response efforts for their child abduction response team called CART, which uh, with a leads tracker delivered on a map. They wanted new leads to be immediately available in ArcGIS Online because finding a missing child is a location dependent and urgent effort. When CART members receive information from the public, this gets entered into the system and an incident gets activated. This powers a last known location being entered into their leads tracker. FME automatically updates it as new data arrives, enabling fast decision making so they can rapidly deploy search and rescue teams. In the screenshot here, you can see the place last seen and the quarter mile buffer visualized on a map, the way it would be seen in the command center. Initial search efforts are then concentrated in that buffer area. So with spatial data uh, integration being a core focus area of FME, there are many more stories like this one in our customer gallery at safe.com slash customers. In fact, many of the stories that we share in the webinar today also have spatial components. 
All right. Uh, someone asked a question about uh, automations. So this is part of FME server um, and FME cloud, not FME desktop. So FME desktop is the offering environment and you can run your workspaces on demand there. But if you want to actually build an automation, then you're going to do that in FME server. Yeah, so FME desktop is where you would do the setting up of the actual integration itself. Like what um, yeah. formats is it coming from? What data sets are you interacting with? How are you transforming that data? Where are you writing it to? Um, and then when you go to FME server, that's where you would automate, you know, how often does it get run or what triggers this workspace to get run? Um, and FME, uh, what Tiana was using was FME cloud. So that's actually a fully hosted, um, that's FME server in a fully hosted AWS environment, and that's hosted by um, Safe Software so that you don't have to manage any of the um, that IT piece of it. Yeah. All right, so um, let's talk about multi-jurisdiction data sharing. So it's important to be able to share data between different regions and levels of government for reasons like emergency dispatch services. So this means many systems need to be kept up to date and the data needs to be quality checked and complete. The workflow for this involves keeping a lot of data sets coordinated, which is a process of integration plus automation. Data sets need to be synchronized and then kept up to date as the source data changes. So Santa Clara County is a great example of this. They wanted to improve their emergency services response time and location accuracy in order to set themselves up for next generation 911. So the goal was to build a map of address points for their 911 dispatch system, which is always up to date and can be contributed to regularly by each city in the county. They used FME to integrate 15 city data sets and public safety layers. And then they used transformers to identify issues like duplicate addresses and sent the output to multiple formats. So they now have a unified address data set in addition to each city maintaining their own existing schemas and workflows. So cities can now contribute addresses to the system on a quarterly basis. Um, it's been a very successful project and has increased the number of known addresses in the county by 50%, which has helped improve emergency services and set them up for next generation 911. So we have a blog on this. Um, you can go to safe.com slash blog or check the GoToWebinar chat for the link to that. Another quick example from our gallery, uh, Warwickshire wanted a system that automatically retrieves public health data from multiple online sources and integrates it in one place. So previously new data was downloaded manually on a monthly or nightly basis. Uh, the data they work with is huge at 60 gigabyte text files. So automatically processing it saved their employees a lot of time. And in the end, this integrated data set helps them to deliver more effective health services and gain a better understanding of the data. So if you're interested in learning more about multi-jurisdiction data sharing, we have more stories that might appeal to you. Uh, you can find these on safe.com or check out these links when we send out the slides after the webinar. And another common scenario we see is governments being mandated to provide open data to the public. Data portals deliver much needed information across departments, agencies, and to citizens. And because of the value of open data, the popularity and demand for it is growing. It's not all that complicated to build an open data portal if you use a data integration workflow to set it up. This requires connecting data from multiple sources throughout the city on a schedule and automating it to eliminate manual efforts. The workflow also needs to be set up to convert the data into shareable formats, and not just one format, but many. People should be able to download exactly the data they want in a variety of formats like shapefiles, Excel, XML, and others. They should be able to choose which coordinate system they want the data in as well. An example of this is the city of San Jose, which was continually receiving requests from its internal departments and from citizens for city maps and information on municipal projects. Due to data being siloed, staff were unable to find the data or did not have the correct application to open it. The city recognized the need to offer a lightweight, mobile-friendly, self-service interactive MACBA gallery for the city's staff and citizens. The city needed to find a tool that was capable of integrating all of their systems, both general IT systems and spatial systems. They also needed a product that was able to keep their maps up to date without maintenance. After assessing various options, they decided to move forward with FME. 
And by implementing FME, the city was able to integrate their various data sets and produce valuable interactive maps containing all of the information that citizens and employees needed. This included affordable housing maps, building permits, city council districts, code complaints, and cone zones. The city also configured FME to automatically update the maps on a nightly basis to ensure they were always current. One of the benefits the city realized after implementation was the incredible flexibility that FME workflows provide. When their chosen output for their workflows, Google Maps Engine, was deprecated, FME enabled them to simply swap out the writer in their workflow to output to CardoDB. Best of all, their switch to this new output went unnoticed by end users of the data. If you're looking to build your own open data portal, we have many resources for this available. Check out our ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Open Data, our webinar comparing solutions, and the article we published that provides top tips. All right, so next let's, let's talk about uh, digital plan submissions. When land developers submit plans to the city, validating and converting the plans to GIS traditionally involves tedious manual processes. Data integration workflows provide the opportunity to automate this. So many cities are creating self-serve data upload services where developers can submit their plans and get back a detailed report on its quality. So to learn more about how to do this, uh, the link here is an ebook on CAD GIS integration. And we also have a lot of step-by-step -step tutorials on the FME Knowledge Center that cover CAD and GIS data. So the city of Henderson uses FME for automated CAD GIS conversions and validation. This enables their automated digital plan submission process for new construction projects. They were able to free up time, reduce the risk of errors and uh, process submissions more quickly, and then add a, da a data validation component to the workflow. So if you're interested in building a web service powered by FME, we have resources to help you. Uh, this could be a data download app, like an open data portal, um, a data submission app, like automated quality assurance or plan submissions, um, an interactive web map, or a number of other services. And so on our website, we have the FME server playground. If you go to playground.fmeserver.com, uh, you can check that out. So here you can browse examples of different implementations and ideas. Um, so you can see down here, we'll, we can click on data delivery, say we want a Google Maps one. Um, so this is an, an example of something you can build. So we can let people draw polygons, say we want a big square around downtown Vancouver. And then we can actually say, okay, click data to area and we can download it. So we've got example code here if you want to build that web page um, so there's a lot of resources here it's a really great place to go if you want to uh, build something powered by fme cloud that's right yeah and in addition to the um, fme server playground you can also get free trials of all of the fme platforms so um, if you want to try that out and then try it out in your own environment you can definitely do that yeah so, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we found that many departments with local government uh, within a local government use their own specialized applications like asset management systems, work order management systems, permitting, licensing, ERPs, GIS, payroll, taxation, and others. The drawback of this is that it can result in data silos. Every data set is stored independently of every other data set, which means they're disconnected and out of sync. By implementing an application integration workflow, you're allowing systems to automatically talk to each other, trigger actions, and send data freely between them without requiring a human being to manually synchronize and connect them. And you're enabling all the different departments to use the best fit for purpose applications for, to get their jobs done. So we've seen this in the city of Surrey, which is an example where they implemented an application integration workflow using FME. For their water meter, meter improve, sorry, for their water meter improvement project, they wanted FME to orchestrate the flow of information to eliminate the painstaking manual effort of re-entering data between systems. Now, when a citizen wants a water meter installed, they request a permit using Amanda, and FME takes over the work from here. It orchestrates live communications between Amanda for permitting, CityWorks for asset management, and Esri for GIS. The water meter 
uh, status can now be viewed by the public prior to installation and coordination between inspectors, contractors, city engineers, taxation staff and surveyors is handled automatically. Once installed, meters are immediately parked as in-service rather than waiting weeks or even months delay. In the city of Lévis, they wanted citizens to be able to report a pothole online and have an automated FME workflow trigger the repair process. Based on incoming geolocation data submitted through the web application, this trigger automatically kickstarts a work order, sends a series of status notifications to the resident once the repair begins, and delivers a weekly maintenance report to city stakeholders. In this situation, FME is enabling the city to keep systems updated and synchronized and delivers actionable items and timely insight into, sorry, delivers actionable and timely insight to on-site crews, residents, and key stakeholders with little to no manual intervention. As a result, their new process is optimized and delivers an effective reporting service that has increased public engagement, collaboration, and operational efficiency. The city has seen a reduction in call reports by 80% and significant time savings equivalent to 23 days of work, which has allowed staff to allocate resources towards other high value services. The ability to share information as fast as possible has allowed the city to effectively target routes that require the most attention while keeping the public informed and up to date. Okay, so we've now seen eight common scenarios that governments around the world are encountering. Uh, we hope you were able to see that by building automated data integration workflows, the potential to innovate and improve local government operations is endless. If you're interested in trying FME, we always offer free trials um, and we have a subscription model specifically for local governments. So you can use unlimited amounts of FME for a price that is based on the size of the population being served. Um, we're seeing the reach of FME expand in local governments, becoming the enterprise solution of choice for data integration across GIS and IT departments. So we pro provided this pricing option to help you deploy the FME platform across your city more easily. This model also helps smaller municipalities deploy the FME platform because population-based pricing will cost less than the price of FME server with one engine. So any size of town or city can deploy a full architecture. Uh, feel free to reach out to us at governmentatsafe.com for more information. Yeah, and here are some additional links for you as well. This blog post has a lot of links to other resources and it summarizes the concepts we talked about in today's webinar. It also links to the stories we showed you along with others. Our Knowledge Center also has tutorials, a Q&A forum, and the whole FME community that you can connect with. And we'd like to invite you to join us on the FME World Tour this spring. Um, every year we host conferences in cities all over the world, which is a chance to learn about the latest FME features and industry trends and network with FME experts in your city. So you can learn more about this by visiting safe.com slash world tour. That's right. And in addition to those one day events that are local to your area, this June, uh, hundreds of the world's top data experts will be gathering in Vancouver, BC, Canada for the FME user conference. You can join us at this event that only takes place about once every three years um, so that you can exchange knowledge, transform your skills and get inspired with FME. So we look forward to seeing you there. So thank you so much everyone for attending and uh, feel free to chat your questions into the GoToWebinar control panel there. Um, we'll stick around for a bit to answer them and um, if we don't answer them live, we'll make sure we follow up with all of you um, individually. Okay, yeah, I think we're good to sign off. We'll follow up with um, the rest of these questions one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you everyone. Thanks very much.